Have you ever seen a movie before it was in theaters or without buying it? Or maybe you downloaded a couple hundred MP3s for free? Well, you might want to learn a little bit about copyright, especially if you hope to be the one making songs or writing books someday. The term copyright refers to laws that protect original works of authorship from being used without permission. Well, what exactly does original works of authorship include? These can be literary works, like J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter books, or they can be dramatic, like the play Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, musical, like your favorite song, or graphical, like paintings, photographs, and websites. They can even be famous speeches, like Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. There are several types of material that are not protected by copyright law. Just a few examples include works that have not been fixed in a tangible form of expression. For example, a performance that has not been written down or recorded. Titles, names, short phrases, and slogans also can't be copyrighted. You might recognize who says this, but it can't be copyrighted. Copyright protection begins as soon as the work is created. You automatically own the copyright for all of those papers you wrote for class or a painting you created. They are your property. You don't have to officially register the work with the copyright office. There are, however, certain definite advantages to registration, the biggest being if someone ever contests the copyright. For the most part, copyright protection in the US and UK lasts for the author's life plus 70 years after the author's death. In Canada, copyrights last for the author's life plus 50 years after their death. At that point, the work becomes part of the public domain and anyone can use it. For example, Shakespeare's plays are part of the public domain. Anyone can perform them without paying a fee. There is no copyright law that will automatically protect an author's writings throughout the entire world. Each country has their own laws that can determine what can be protected, how it is protected, and how it is enforced. For example, in the United States, copyrighted material can be copied by schools for use in class, but not by a business that wants to reuse it in a pamphlet. Even though you can freely use works in the public domain, you should still give credit to the author. If you quote a book or use an image in school, it should also be referenced. Now this is how you give credit to an author on a website. And for a book. For a source on how to reference a wide variety of materials in different media, you should consult a style guide like the MLA. That stands for Modern Language Association Handbook. You can also ask the copyright owner for permission to use their work. This can be as simple as sending off an email asking for permission, but it can also involve forms and agreements for payment. Now, it's not all doom and gloom over copyright. There is also a term called fair use, which allows you to use some copyrighted material for educational purposes. Some common examples you should also be aware of. It is a copyright violation if you upload or download full-length sound recordings without permission of the copyright owners. Permission is implied, of course, when you buy music from an online store like iTunes or Napster. Owning a CD means that you own one copy of the music that you can use for personal use. For example, you can create a compilation recording to listen to in the car. However, you cannot make the songs available on the internet for others to download. The same rules apply for images. Avoid copying or using images you find on web pages without permission of the copyright owner and at least look for a copyright clause on the website first. They may just ask for a reference. However, there are a number of free and pay websites that allow you to download and use images. There's also a great site at creativecommons.org. This site provides photos, music, text, books, educational material, and more that are all free to use under certain conditions without asking for permission. You should assume other people's works are copyrighted and can't be copied unless you know otherwise. One specific form of infringement is plagiarism. Plagiarism is defined as copying someone else's work and claiming it as your own. Works do not need a copyright notice, you know, like the copyright or the C with the circle around it, to have copyright protection. Remember that as soon as you create something, you automatically own the copyright to that work. This means any image you find on a web page may be copyrighted. Anyone who uses the copyrighted material without the owner's permission can be found guilty of copyright infringement. 
if a lawsuit is brought in court, the infringer will have to pay the copyright owner the amount of money made from using the work or that the owner would have made if the infringement had never occurred. Remember, authors, whether it's a song or a book they wrote, have spent time and resources to create their work. We need to respect that they own these works and deserve to be credited and maybe even profit from them. And don't assume just because something is not clearly marked as a copyrighted work that you can use it. Always ask for permission first, or use one of the resources, such as creativecommons.org, to quickly search for works that are okay to use. Modern technology, like CD burners and the internet, make it much easier to infringe on copyright. But whenever you consider it to save a little time or a few extra dollars, just think how you'd feel if you put time and effort into something and then someone else took it without asking. It's always best to err on the side of caution when dealing with copyrights.